There's always a contest to see besides between somebody, the president, who comes in from the outside, even though Barack's been two years in the Senate, he's really an outsider. And when somebody comes in from the outside, there's always a struggle. Will Washington change the president, or will the president change Washington? Oftentimes, Washington wins. We can't let that happen. That is our job. It doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to do it the old way just because everybody always did that. You know, Jerry was talking about the 57 state, 57 state strategy, and, and people are saying, you know, imagine taking on the Washington establishment. I didn't take on the Washington establishment. I had my own power base. It was you. It was the 99.7% the of the people who didn't live in Washington wanted to do it the right way, wanted to count, wanted to have what they did really matter. And you did that. And that is why we changed the DNC. That's why the 50 state strategy worked. What? Well, well, we're Washington. I know you're. Yeah, but you're not the Washington. You're not the Washington I have in mind. <laughs> Yes, but we're going to make it up to you by making sure you have a senator and a congressman. Yeah, that was that was so we're going to start the Q&A program in a minute, but let me just ask you a question first. Where is that bill? Didn't it pass? No, no, it died. It should die. And we want you to the NRA killed it. The NRA Ah, all right. So I'm going to find out something about this. this is going to be, instead of having a Q&A, we're going to have a statement and answer question. Um, well, anyway, so let me thank you on your fifth birthday. Uh, I do have to catch a plane. I'm not going to leave right this second, but I'm going to leave fairly soon, so I don't want to talk for too long, because I do intend to have a piece of that incredible-looking birthday cake before yeah, I leave. Uh, thanks very much for asking me, for inviting me to come and talk. Thanks for picking uh, this wonderful place to do. It's one of my favorite places in Washington, because we really have had a lot of fun over here, uh, here over the years. Um, and also, the art show was put on by somebody I know. Uh, and um, uh, and again, you know, just keep in mind, you did this. I, I mean, I appreciate the kind things that Jerry said and all this. And you did this. This was not me. This was you. A great leader it doesn't lead. A great leader takes the energy from the people at the grassroots and focuses. If you look at what Barack did, his incredible messaging, what he did was take this hopes, the hopes and aspirations of this new extraordinary young generation of Americans, focus it like a parabolic mirror and send it back. And that's why he won. Well, that's what we're all doing here. But I'll just close with this. What I tell young people all the time is that you have to learn from what we did right as well as learn from what we did wrong. The one mistake we made, the big mistake that we made, is after we got through this incredible decade of change in the late 60s and the early 70s, you know, we thought we'd accomplished quite a lot, and we were pretty tired, and the nation was exhausted, and we decided we could take some, off, some time off politics, so we focused on our families and our careers, and those are important things, especially our families. But I think that if we hadn't done that, we hadn't taken the time off, we might never, never have had George Bush and Dick Cheney's presidency and vice presidency. And what I say to young people, I don't have to tell this group of activists, but I'm going to say it anyway. You can never take time off politics. I don't mean when you're 50 and you've got kids and so forth, you, you can you're going to sleep for on somebody's floor for 20 weeks while you're going to for the <laughs> don't expect that. But you've got to stay involved in politics. Politics, much as Sarah Palin may disagree, is community organizing. Politics it is. Community, or, community organizing is really bringing to bear through an organized, in an organized way, human resources to get something done fundamental that matters that improves people's lives. Whether you're on the library board or the planning commission or you're running for Congress or whatever it is, that's what politics really is. I mean, of course, we get all excited about people running for governor and president and senator and so forth and so on. But it matters a lot what happens on the, on the ground, because that's where real change comes from. The reason that folks changed their mind about the bill, uh, the, the public option the other day, what people wrote in, wasn't because Howard Dean said the public option was important. It was because people in their district said that the public option was important to them. And those people in their districts are activists. I don't mean they're democratic left-wing socialist activists. <laughs> I mean, but they are just people who are active in their community and therefore are well respected and their opinion matters. It matters a lot. That's who you are. Your opinion matters because you work hard for the things that you believe in and people respect you. That's how we're going to get this done. That's how we're going to get this changed. Um, so thank you. We've got a lot of work to do still, but we're on the right track. And um, to quote a, a, a very famous sitcom in the 70s, come on, I'm moving on up. <laughs> And, and, and the crew, the 
you see, uh, for democracy tradition, I'll be having to take comments, questions, and rude remarks if necessary. <laughs> yes. Um, here, here. I want to give you this. Ah, yes, and, and the lobbyists. Are you yeah. registered? Yeah. <laughs> Marcus, so this is an activist. Okay, so. Grassroots. And I, I want you to stop demeaning Washington without explicitly. Are you right? The distinction between. <laughs> Those people who were elected and sent by the rest of the country and those of us who were disenfranchised have been for two centuries here, um, which is over a hundred years longer than the longest territory was a territory before it became a state. And um, if you look at the fact that you have almost 600,000 Americans who have been disenfranchised. I can no, make up for my sins here yeah. by putting this up at once. And if you look at more progressive people in Congress, well as at the local and state level, please talk to your senators and your congressmen and tell them to support statehood for the District of Columbia. Yeah, I think my senators and congressmen are pretty good shape. Yes, but I really meant the, the political culture here. I didn't mean the individuals. It would be kind of dumb to come here and talk like that. Oh, I suppose I should plug my book, Howard Dean's uh, Prescription for Real Health Care Reform. You can, uh, you can get it free if you join the Progressive Book Club, which I disagree to chair. And, uh, or you can go online and get it from DFA or wherever. Uh, although right now it's uh, it's not in print. It's actually, to, to, to get you the first time you're blocked together, you actually have to have to get over your iPhone. And, I, my frank confession is that I have no idea how to do that, and I don't have an idea. <laughs> but you can do it. Uh, but, um, so I personally don't think mandates are necessary for the same reasons the president used during the campaign. I also don't think they're worth having a big fight over. Honestly, uh, I think they'll have trouble getting them passed. The reason I don't think it, it, it's necessary is because the people that really need the mandates are under 30. And I just think we ought to give people under 30 health insurance for nothing. Um, because they're incredibly inexpensive to insure, and they're, if you give them a waiver to go get health insurance, they're going to buy a Harley instead. Thanks very much. Thank you. And actually, if anybody wants to kind of go towards the back, we'll ask Keith Ivy to take a couple of group shots of us, okay, with the cake and the government.